Uh, hello and welcome everyone. This is Blackadder at Blackadder's Place and I'm here with another installment in the Experts of AOT series and for the next match to commentate I've chosen a game on Nile Delta between the Renaissance who we can also known as the Hell's Ravage from Deities of Death and against him Elmo from JSS, the champions of RTSD, so the best clan in the Age of Mythology right now. The gods that the players have chosen is Isis for Renaissance or Hell's Ravage and Elmo is playing Zeus, so that's a pretty top-notch match right there. And let's have a look at the map here, because it's a kind of new one, and it has been developed uh, some months ago by Rebels Rising and Bubble, and it looks like this. If you want to download it, it's, I think, available on Steam. I will include the link in the description of the video, and it's also available in the latest Publi Balance patch as a normal standard map. In the random map set so you can play it without any problems the main feature of this map is the water on the left as you can see uh, which is pretty bountiful and the separation of the fishing spots is kind of okay and the players are kind of close to the water there is a lot of land on the right side with the tcs and extra gold and wood and even a lot of hunt so yeah kind of reasonable map but lately it's been called as been very favorable for the aggressive nations in the game and well let's see if it will be the truth in this game as well because Zeus is kind of more aggressive than Isis so potentially might have an advantage but let's see if that will be the case. So the first to have a look at is right now Direct. Renaissance the Hell's Ravage who is playing the Isis and who is going for the standard hunt but he's just thinking about something else first and he seems to be going for the for the dock yeah he almost forgot Direct. here and he's just going to be for the starting hunt with the extra villies that will be built the pharaoh though with the first villie is going for a fishing spot so let's put on the fog of war to see what he actually sees and yeah he sees this one so that's a pretty good one for placing the dock otherwise his scouting is kind of normal he's going a bit aggressively into it at the bottom to see what this map is look like and well this DC is kind of okayish and the gold not bad either not bad and he's collecting quite a lot of goats at this point which will ensure that he does a pretty good start does have a pretty good start third DC is also discovered in a reasonable position so he doesn't have to complain about anything and let's switch into Elmo how his position is Legend. he's scouting with his Katascopos Pretty much similarly to what Helsrevich is doing. And he has built Doc in yeah, a very similar position. There's not really any problem with that. And well, he is Cross going for standard build order for Zeus with Catherine from the goats right next to his TCs to spare the wood for the granary. Cross and going for the storage house right next to the wood line. Otherwise, quite a ton of hunt in the middle, rather in the forefront, so that's very important for him. But the TCs are kind of, yeah, I would kind of say that this one is all right. It's pretty much the same as our Ravages, but this one is his third from Elmo, I think. Yeah, it is third from him. And it's right in the middle of the map, so it's kind of unfortunate for Elmo, because he will have to also win the water, because it would be well in range from this kind of cove. This first relic, Cavalry, Chariot, Archer hit points, that will be very important for Aiden, for the Zeus. <laughs> That's nice, the skeleton here. <laughs> very nice touch indeed. And some other relics. Better scout line of sight. No, well, that won't be really all that useful. Cheaper armory research costs. That's also great, but not really for the Zeus, because he will be waiting for the mythical upgrade from Hephaestus, I think. But this gold trickle is absolutely gorgeous, and it will be super important if Renaissance can discover it. And he hasn't yet, although it's not really far away, but once he does, that's definitely going to be the first order of business for him. So in the meantime, Hasravich is starting to gather in some gold and also wood, of course, and he's increasing his economy on the water, as would be usual and prudent, and he's already having a second dog in a very <laughs> aggressive position. So he's trying to steal some of the boats for other fishing spots from his opponent. Elmo right now is going for a more defensive gathering from the fish because obviously these are slightly closer 
than these are. Well, it's more or less the same, but he really wants to go for the ones that are at the back so that they are better protected from the Eggy. And Elmo is right now dropping a tempo, so that's like three and a half minutes finished. It's probably going to be like 4.30 advance. I don't really think he should be having any problems with food anytime soon. Now let's switch into Elmo. Yeah, 250, so I'm thinking this will be kind of the last really to be built. 350, yep. Prost, I kind of guess that will be the case. So let's see if that will happen. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, he's definitely waiting for the advance. Is he researching something? Still no researches yet. He doesn't have Antinox either, which is understandable on the water. You don't really want to waste the gold. And the wood, of course. Switching into wood. So Athena in here. And it seems like a pretty good time for a second dock somewhere in the offensive position like here as well. But he's going for a more defensive one, so he kind of expects he will have to defend in the water, which is kind of curious against Inegi. Yeah, making an <laughs> yeah use of all the free docks as building for, and he will be very hard actually to take out of the water because these are very close to the dock, these as well, and these as well. So they will be reasonably protected. And what's this relic? Ah, I can't click there. God damn it! Well, you will have to see it slightly later because I can't see him. Huh? I can, but yeah, he just won't tell me. <laughs> He just won't tell me. Anyway then, advanced at 88% and how's it looking for Hellstrevich? He's still not advancing. Just now clicking in, so he'll be very, very late, like 5.30, 5.40. And that should give quite a lot of advantage to Elmo. He should be well on his way to actually capturing this water from his opponent. But yeah, those free dogs, they will allow Renaissance to come back into the game on the water quite easily. I don't really see anything going on on the water, on the land yet. This might not all trying to scout and possibly uh, make life difficult for some of those dogs, but they are being protected very nicely by the natural wall from the houses. And well, here are the first naval battles, or battles, <laughs> right now it's just raiding. And Helsrevich doing pretty well with his dog, obviously, with Helmo not doing all that well with the micro and catching some free fire here. Well, but he should disrupt the economy substantially at this point, but once, once Helsrevich advances, that should be about now, he will be well back into the game and without too much trouble, I think. I'm just gonna have a look at some of the economy upgrades possibly. And what is it? Ha ha ha! He actually has stolen the cavalry relic, which is pretty important because it will this allows some reasonable raiding from Elmo, and Renaissance seems to be heading into faster heroic. So, yep, that will be interesting. And do we see some upgrades? Pickaxe for better <laughs> for a better prosperity. So, of course, it's going to be useful. And is he building inside his docks? No, he isn't. He's completely ignoring the water right now, Renaissance. And he's just letting Elmo raid free without any problems. And he will probably come back into the water once heroic hits. He's having a pretty good amount of resources, so that will be a very good switch into the Heroic very soon. So I'm not gonna waste any time here. And let's have a look at Elmo. I'm curious about his upgrades. He's just having a hand axe, so better uh, wood gathering. And he's moving for another TC right now. Yeah, those five fillies are definitely going for the TC. Yep, and it's kind of curious that he wants to go for the defensive first. But maybe he's expecting the faster Heroic and doesn't want to be surprised by the ancestors, right? He's about to finish the TC, especially when he doesn't have ceasefire and he went for the restoration. He was expecting some water water battle. This is why he went Athena, because otherwise you usually go for Hermes against Sinegi. And well, he will be slightly surprised and maybe disappointed. Although we heard that the stables has been dropped, second as well, being used very nicely as a block to protect this gold. And well, his resources are kinda okay, so... I'm not sure if he's going to go for the stables or faster heroic right now. Yeah, especially when he's building armory. He might be thinking about heroic with the second DC rather than raiding and trying to disrupt the faster heroic from the Egypt. 
who has a right now cast prosperity, so he will be having a huge post in gold and 50% into nefties already. So pretty interesting. And he still can't deposit <laughs> the relic because he wants all the extra gold that you can get through this, through the empowerment. On the water, free reign of Elmos 3RMS, of course, without any problem whatsoever. And Renaissance is not doing anything, so yeah, he will definitely go for it when he advances into the heroic. Here are just some goats captured by captured by the Sphinx and a bolt to actually protect the gold bellies. Right now he Elmo was kind of forced into it and I think he didn't want to do it because this will allow the Isis to go for the Osiris which is not really ideal as it's a pretty strong unit and will be very good against the Colossi. And well Elmo right now having an advantage in score which is understandable because of the huge water economy and the extra kills through the boats, but well, this all might be ending pretty soon. Because the Levi Leviathan is in place, and that means that that's pretty much the end to any and all water shenanigans from his opponent until he advances into heroic as well. So some protective volume being made by Elmo, because he kinda needs to secure all this food. And Scorpion, a very nice riding from Renaissance, that's going to be pretty nasty for Elmo, who isn't protected here, he doesn't have any tower here, or a hero, and well, yeah, that's very bad news for him. He's going to lose at least one Billy here, and if he's not careful, even more. So yeah, that's one Billy down, Dionysus advance 9 minutes, that, that's not how bad from Elmo. But, well, he definitely was hoping for something else. Right now he's all out of gold, and was he building some skillas? Yeah, he was, at least one skilla, and with the huge army he has, he hasn't stopped making 3RMS at all. He is going to win the water, because, yeah, the Renaissance is not just interested in it at all. In the middle though, Renaissance has captured his front TC, basically captured it by building the Migdor, and making sure that his opponent doesn't, and he's very aggressive with this game. Which is kind of surprising here, because Aegis usually are not as aggressive as Greeks. And well, the choice for the second TC and not going Hippicons, but Heroic, might be a bit difficult for <laughs> Elmo right now, who is housed. And he definitely can build extra houses. Yeah, right now building those. And he'll be having quite a decent amount of Hippicons. But will it be enough? Well, speed of those is 5, and Hippicons are 5-5, five, five, so they should be able to catch them. But it will require a bit of micro. At the same time, Willis are still getting targeted, so I'm not exactly sure what the idea behind Elmo's play right now is. Yeah, the Hydra can't <laughs> find a way through. And unfortunately, this <laughs> gold mine is also in the very nice range of those chariots. So the second TC is kinda not paying off as much as you would have hoped because Renaissance is employing a very very good trade in from the chariots and also the scorpion men here and well this results that this wall will not be finished and basically Elmo is right now being denied his third TC which will be very important in just a moment. A bit of idols from the gold here. And since this map is built in a way so that you have to capture the gold in the forefront, there's absolutely nothing in back. He's in a pretty precarious situation because he needs to somehow secure the right side of the map altogether. Otherwise, he will be got starved pretty soon. So the first attempted at attack is here through the siege towers, some elephants and a whole lot of chariots archers. From Renaissance, and well, will this be enough? <laughs> Just as he kills the Odysseus, he calls in Ancestors as well. And that's going to be a very strong push, and might be, might be pretty strong and able to take the TC down. I think it should be. And where is actually Elmo right now going? He's going somewhere into the offensive, probably trying to fight some, <coughs> sorry, find some gold villies. And he, if he is lucky, he might find just those and kinda even the game here a bit. But it's kinda all in it seems, because Vidis weren't able to protect the TC, which is down. And basically killing all the strategy from, <laughs> from Elmo so far. And well, these gold Vidis are gonna get traded pretty heavily as well. Yeah, they... yeah, they are absolutely running nowhere from this position. And... 
Yeah, this is absolute slaughter. This is going to get killed absolutely everything. And Elmo is in a pretty bad position. And well, at least this is a small victory. <laughs> and market being built, it seems like Elmo is kind of interested in some faster heroic right now, or rather mythic. But well, with Renaissance doing so well and scouting so well, he will know where to go. So the water is basically in the power of Elmo, which is the last resort for him and the last chance to actually make something happen with the game. And well, with Epigons returning from the unsuccessful raid, I'm not exactly sure where, where they were going really. They might have a chance of somehow protecting the base here and the TC. At the same time, Renaissance is securing his second town center. The more offensive one, so he is feeling very comfortable. And why wouldn't he? Byron, he is denying Elmo pretty much everything. He's denying this hunt, this gold, which is much more important at this stage of the game. And well, the situation is not very nice for Elmo, and he needs to be super careful because he needs some kind of gold. He is at 26 and having absolutely nothing. And well, is he at least building some? Donkeys to actually generate trade profit, not yet. But he decided to cast bronze on the hippicons that he has, and hopes to actually somehow capture the gold mine. Yeah, that's the only thing he can do right now, and the most important. So these siege towers are gonna get killed, and well, Elmo will be able to capture some kind of the gold. And will it be enough? I'm kind of not sure because Renaissance is not losing any units at all. He's still having a pretty decent army. Let's check some upgrades, not anything, but he should be having quite a decent amount of resources and with being popped almost, he might be able to somehow gather enough to go for some hero heroic or rather mythic at this point. Gold mining very secure for him, no raids at all, but the situation is slightly changing into Elmo's aggression right now, which is pretty curious, but he needs to make use of the bronze that he just cast so that it doesn't go to waste altogether. So not really anything interesting in Renaissance point of view, so let's switch back to Elmo and see his economy. Yeah, this finally stabilizing with some of the gold from the extra gold mine that he just captured. And well, can he do something with this battle? I kind of think not, because the extra fire from the Migdol and the TC is absolutely huge, and with the Pharaoh taking care of the Hydra, that was one of the staples here that was doing the damage. Well, he needs to retreat and regroup and make sure that he protects the gold he needs very, very direly. Renaissance at the same time is trying to raid with the Camel and the Scorpion Man, so he's interested to see what his opponent is doing. He's not capturing. DC and he might be going into the peg gold mine again. Trying to see what is happening there. Oh well, <laughs> Elmo just took all his epicons to actually go after those two units, and that leaves all those Willies free for the taken for the chariots here. All right, so that wasn't a very good play from him. That cost him. You can see at least two Willies on the corpses here. Well, yeah, that's just small mistakes like these that cost you the game. But still it's kind of surprising that Elmo is very much into the game with <laughs> the brut brutal slaughter Prostagma. at the right side and having lost the TC being pushed pretty strongly. Prostagma. But well, that Zeus pretty strong here and Renaissance somehow unable to close the deal with having just the chariot archers and not any siege or elephants. Just these two are not enough to do anything lasting in there. But still Renaissance doing pretty well. And this is a point it where uh, Elmo is trying to raid, but well, Renaissance is having a pretty good line of sight. And we, even with the Hydra killing some of the hunters here, and this is not going to result in any reasonable losses. But still, it's going to be a downtime in gold gathering because Renaissance is not gathering anywhere else. But hello, second TC being built, or rather third. Hmm. And oh my. Why doesn't Elmo run with the release? Come on, run away! You have just a secured goal here at the right side. Both of these, you are still gathering at the forefront. Oh, that's just such a shame. You are losing release very needlessly. And I'm just gonna have a look post game at the civilian units. And well, oh my, <laughs> you can see the difference here. 
Yep, that's a huge difference, and I would be curious to see what Elmo does about this. Right now he doesn't have any economy whatsoever, he's just getting some of the villies here. Finally, researching at least medium hippicons. And we have no other upgrades here, but 5-headed Hydra, that's a pretty strong one. And it could help him quite immensely. But, well, defense being made, Renaissance. Yeah, he's not definitely not interested in some shenanigans in his gold mine. But with all Thank those you. epicons, well, he might have dealt some damage here. Yeah, he definitely will. Because he's returning back, and, well, <laughs> this is just two battles right now. He becomes fighting those chariot archers, and this pharaoh, Bevchau Set, <laughs> that's the name, trying to fight the Hydra that is almost at half health. And very susceptible, of course, to the guy. At the same time, Renaissance is trying to get through, and he does with a bit of a raiding party onto the gold mine at the right. Well, not really anything he's going to find there, as Elmo is still gathering at the forefront. And well, are we going to see some attempt at a TC from Elmo? Because Renaissance is at 3, and having. You have some upgrades. No, you don't. So he's just right now aiming Into for simple population advantage. And he's not aiming to return at the water, as you can see, so it's free reign for Elmo. And well, I think Girl. just by the sheer numbers, Renaissance should be able to win. But is that going to be the case? Elmo right now going at least for the second TC again. He's not going for the aggressive one, because he has no way to actually capture it. And well... It's about time to retrieve with the villies, isn't it? <laughs> and Elmo is not. Just again, what unawares. Right now he moving at this bit, but he is going to lose a whole ton of villies here. And this is not a very good game from Elmo, if you consider all those villie losses right <laughs> in the forefront. He just was probably paying attention to some of these hippicons that were trying to catch the raiding party, which they did, and well, with those four siege towers, he might have been able to do something, but yeah, those epicons are super strong, and when you have nothing else than just chariot archers, you can't really do anything against that, and it's time to actually retreat from Renaissance. Well, wait for a better time to respond to some kind of attack. The five headed Hydra is finally dead. And the battle is full on, villagers still going into the forefront. But second TC is up, which should result in a pretty decent advantage from Elmo right now, because those Epicons are very strong, and when you have quite a lot of them, they are like the best unit against an Aegean. So let's see how this battle develops. Right now, a lot of Siege Towers, a lot of Chariot Archers against a decent amount of Epicons that are slowly but surely dying, due to the advantage of numbers for a Renaissance, aka Hellsravage. So the battle is raging on. And with Elmo trying to regroup, because he is recognizing that the firepower is slightly too strong. And even though there are absolutely no <laughs> melee units, uh, well, the Hippicons are not having a good day today. So how's it looking right now? I kind of think this is more or less, more or less a stallish battle. With the melee units here... Ah, uh, yeah, it was a stallish battle until mercenaries are making an <laughs> appearance here. At least Into one of them. Three. And that could be all it actually takes. Rather four. God damn it. <laughs> that makes the Into difference you. in the battle because they are the melee unit that Renaissance right now sorely needs Into to get you. through those pesky hippicons. Well, since Into Renaissance you. is not having all that many losses here, Elmo has to retreat from the gold mine finally into some more safer one. But Into is it going to be safer? Not really. Because he's moving way too late and he doesn't have any protection whatsoever. And he's just Good. leading all the chariots here exactly to the spot where he's gathering gold. So that's going to be gold staff number two. And a lot of dead willies again. So yeah, that's that. Great. In the middle though, Elmo is doing pretty well Great. with being closer to his military buildings and getting Great. rid of those pesky chariots. But really enough, he's, <laughs> he is gaining advantage in the middle, but on the right he's losing a ton of willies. And he is going to be really cold starved very badly. And Sans is having a pretty straight economy. How's he looking for Elmo? The same. And yeah, he doesn't have any gold. And when you are building an army of Hippicons, you are having no gold whatsoever. 
I'm kinda curious why Elmo isn't going for an archery range. And some Peltas, looking how many had chariot archers actually Renaissance has, because Peltas, they just eat them alive. With a bit of micro, they could be really powerful for him. But well, that's that, and Renaissance is finally <laughs> responding and making some spearmen from the barracks that he has built next to his TC here. So, at least some semblance of a defense here, but still, Willy is dead, and this army is pretty huge. And looking at some of these economies, I'm thinking that we are going to see a huge difference in the valleys here. Yeah, most definitely, like 65 against 45, that's 20 really difference, 1 TC difference, and it's kind of a wonder that Elmo is actually still in the game. It's mainly due to the water economy, of course. He's having quite a lot of fishing boats, so that's a thing that's keeping him alive. Um, does he have some other upgrades? No, he doesn't. And just an extra heavy chariots here from chariots on the Renaissance part, which is exactly what is needed in this army composition right now. So yeah, not even Hippicons can actually do anything against that kind of army. Pretty good raiding from Renaissance still going on in the middle. And well, same. Elmo is trying to at least respond in kind and trying to raid some of the economy from an Renaissance kill the gold release, which is the most important part of the economy for both players right now. And well, this one spearman is not going to stop it. But he bought at least some time for some of these extras to retreat. And well, finally, some archery range from Elmo. So, are we going to see some Peltas? Finally, we should be. It would be very curious if he did if he didn't and he's going for it. But well having no gold kinda sucks and the raiding continues so pretty good job by Halsrevich, aka Renaissance on this map, doing very well eat against the aggressive Zeus and right now that's kinda a desperation attempt with the Willis <laughs> trying to get rid of those pesky raiders. But well I'm kinda afraid that's not going to be enough army here. Uh, some more chariots are trickling in, and the raiding is not going all that well in the Renaissance's base. And there's still a lot of safe gold here, and not any problem whatsoever, but a huge problem for Elmo in the defensive here. And yep, that's it. Elmo finally calls it the game, as even though he won the water, that wasn't enough. It should have been the game for him. As Renaissance had a pretty good transition to land, went for the very effective chariot raiding, and not even second TC for Elmo would make up for that. He just sacrificed kind of the production of Hippicons for the faster heroic age and the second TC, and it just did not pay off. He was later in the army, and that allowed Renaissance all the advantage to kill all the gold willies at the right here. And that basically from there it snowballed, and it was just a Matter of time, it seemed, until Elmo would be forced to resign altogether. But still, he was in the game quite a longer time than I would expect, and probably other players would have been dead much sooner. But, well, in this case, it was kind of slowly but surely going for the inevitable. So let's have a look at the post game here. With Renaissance ruling everything, but not really having all that higher score. Looking how the game was going. I would have expected quite a lot more, and the economies were actually quite equal, which is very curious. I'm just gonna check some upgrades. Prostagma. Having just hand ducks and quarry here. Okay, so he did have a pretty good upgrades. And laborer for Renaissance. Yeah, he did have at least this shaft mine and. And ducks, well, he was having slightly lesser economy due to the upgrades here. It seemed like Elmo did have more of them, so that's probably the reason why he was able to be in the game for so long and why the economy score is very similar. Yeah, the food, of course, he needed that, and that's basically the only one that he had from the water there. And well, gold farm trade, not really, but otherwise, yeah, Renaissance was doing pretty well. And 20 <laughs> difference in the civilians, of course. That's the huge rating at the beginning. A good military score for the Renaissance. Improvements. Yeah, kind of okay. You would expect. 
En tiedä. <laughs> Even though chariots are kinda countered by hippie guns, they prove to be the better unit, especially when they had the advantage of numbers most of the time. Civilian units, yeah, that's the huge drop. That's the advantage he had from being in the water and the second DC, but yeah, when he got caught with the gold, it just wasn't going to be nice from that point. And he did have quite a good heavy economy. Not exactly sure why he wasn't selling it at the market. He was having it, but that's a decision he had to make. And he didn't think it was worth it, probably. But anyway, that was pretty interesting game on the Nile Delta map, which is interesting by itself. And well, good job by Renaissance. Good job and GG. And as always, if you like the video, hit like. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to be notified when next video of the series Experts of AOT gets released. So thank you for watching. I've been Blackadder at Blackadder's Place and see you later.